don't know if it went live. Huh, weird. Hey, you're live. You're live, my friend. Okay. You are officially live. Uh, I love Spreecast. I love Spreecast. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Fuel for Success. Good to see everybody on here this morning. I'm excited about life today. Uh, technology, maybe not so much. Life, I am excited about, and I'm glad that all of our friends are with us here today. Today is episode 184, and it's a Tuesday. It's a beautiful 37 degrees Fahrenheit here in Hastings, Minnesota. I love this time of year, and it's, uh, it's wonderful to be alive. Today is Tuesday, and just like every Tuesday, today we're going to talk about life coaching, motivation, issues that impact you every single day, um, and where else can you get daily motivation and life coaching wisdom than right here. In Studio 11, remotely, my good friend Matt Maddox. How are you this morning, my friend? Oh, buddy, I am blessed to be alive, my friend. I'm excited about today, one of our favorite days. Tuesday's a day where we just kind of, you know, talk about practical life stuff. You know, we talk about, um, you know, anything that will help people with their life, you know, help them become more motivated, more organized, higher energy, uh, better manage their time. Today's really a, a day about life coaching where we just get very practical and we just talk about issues about our life. You know, we cover health Monday, we cover spirituality Wednesday, we go in business and entrepreneurship on Thursdays, and then of course Friday is family and relationships. But um, so we're here today to just help people with their life, you know, to go over some life coaching, uh, practical situations that maybe people face so looking forward to it and then of course you know if you ever miss one of our episodes you can always watch the archive later like many of you do so hi to all of you that are watching on the archives tonight hope you all enjoyed your day today um so anyways mike uh you were sharing with me pre-show uh about a piece of advice you gave your daughter in, in a letter that you wrote her this morning before school and uh, what was that piece of advice, my friend? Because it's something I believe in personally. Well, as you, and I want to kind of cover that subject just for a brief moment. Sure. Uh, as you may know, uh, every morning I pack my daughter's lunch before I take her to school, and I, I handwrite a little note to drop in there. Uh, depends, you know, depends on what I feel. But this morning I felt like just giving her a little life advice, and I said, you know, uh, habits are things that are formed by repeated actions. And I said, you know, and I basically told her, look at yourself and find one habit that you'd like to change. So not all habits are bad. Some habits are bad. Some habits are good. I mean, think about brushing your teeth every morning. That's a good habit. Saying please and thank you. Those are good habits. So don't get caught up in the mentality that all habits are bad. But I said, think about your life. Find one habit you don't like about yourself and spend the next 30 days changing it. And I said, the only way you can really change it is to intentionally change your actions so your actions turn into habits and I said also think of one thing you'd like to start doing and add that to your uh, regimen as well and, and strange I'd be interested in what she says about it afterwards what the answer to that would be yeah Mike I'm a believer in list making and I believe that everyone should have a list of their good habits uh, that they want to have and a list of bad habits they want and need to break. Yeah. And I like what you said. I really believe in that. And I do that in my life coaching. As I say, I don't try to tell people to change all their habits at once. I say just focus on one and really immerse yourself and really, really develop a process and a routine and a strategy around breaking that one habit. Or I like what you said adding a new habit, whether you want to get into the habit of exercise or the habit of going to bed by 11 and waking up at five or the habit of, you know, not eating late at night or the habit of, you know, reading a book, reading, yeah. you know, the habit of maybe writing in your journal. So these are all good and bad habits, you know. So what would you say, Mike? Let's each name three bad habits that people have that need to be broken if they're going to be successful you name one i'll name one bad habit until we feel like stopping and you know what mike you know what i'll tell you whenever we want to stop we can because it's our show it's our show <laughs> 
Like, if we only want to share one, then we could stop at one if we wanted to. I could actually write. Literally, our right. <laughs> I could actually right now say, you know what? I don't even want to name one. I'm going to, I'm going to talk about banjos today. Yeah, speaking of, Mike, I played banjo music all day long yesterday while I was writing. And it just put, like, the, when you read my book, you'll be able to tell by the just energy of my writing. You'll be reading and thinking, okay, this dude was listening to banjo music while he was, you're going to be shaking the book while you're reading it, you know? There's so much energy in banjo music. You can't, like, play a sad song on banjo. I guess uh, you can. But... It's just something else. <laughs> uh... What were we talking see about? See Stacy Bishop on the show. Stacy Bishop just got two juicers donated to Mission Twenty Five. Thank you, Stacy. Awesome. Her and a friend Matt are out in Nashville. Just awesome people. And uh, thank you, Stacy Bishop. Good to have you on the show live today. We don't usually get this treat. Um, yeah, that's a bad habit, Al. You're right. Don't work too hard. You know, I kind of went off on that. You know, Mike, I've been doing 60-second video blogs now. 60 seconds. Yeah. It's hard keeping them in 60 seconds, but I'm working it, my friend. It's good. Uh, some bad habits you've seen hey. people have that, that you know are going to cause them to miss out on the success they could be having. You know, there's bad habits of money. There's bad habits with food. There's bad habits with time. There's bad habits with your attitude. There's bad habits with your life. What what are a few? One that one that jumps out at me right away is is uh, is oversleeping every day. Like not getting up and attacking your day. That to me is like you just sort of let the day flow into whatever is going to happen. Or oversleep and rush at the you know um, when. People have to be like, let's say you have to be at work and, and it's a 10 minute drive and you get up at 745. Uh, it's it's going to be hard for you to have a clear mind and, and, and those sort of things when you're always rushed and sleeping up to the last minute. That's a bad habit. That is a bad habit. Um, a bad habit that I see people have that I think is going to limit their success is um, not living, being, uh, procrastination is a bad habit. You know, I was giving this lesson to my son today because yesterday he left his basketball and his hat in my front seat. He knows, don't leave anything in my car. Like, you know, I, my, one of my biggest pet peeves of life are people that leave cups in their cup holder or, you know, Chick-fil-A bags or bags from the grocery store, straw wrappers in the door handle. I just, I immediately take all trash out. I, I can't, I can't live, I can't drive with trash in my car. So I was teaching Caleb, I said, now listen, this morning, I said, I'm going to give Carol, you some, Carol some talk, life yeah. coaching this morning on the way to school. I actually gave Caleb a full-blown seminar today on health. It was funny because he was asking me all kinds of questions about, you know, what is the secret to knowing what's healthy and what's not? And what should you get that's organic and what's not? And uh, <laughs> so anyways, yeah, Al, I don't like clutter anywhere. I really don't. But um, anyway, so I was telling Caleb, I said, Caleb, if you can discipline yourself to do it now in every area of your life, you know, you take your clothes off. I don't allow them just to throw them in the closet. Like you put them in the dirty clothes basket immediately. Put your shoes up. You know, like get into a routine. Like my, my keys and my watch and my wallet are always in the same place. I mean, literally 100% of the time, I don't ever have to worry about losing my keys, ever, because they're always in the same place. That was a habit that was developed over a period of time of just doing it now. Like, I know people that never make their bed. I, me, I make it right when I wake up. Because it's all about, it's all about, it's a mentality. It's a do it now mentality. And I think that's a habit that actually will help you with your success. And then being a procrastinator is going to sabotage your success. People that procrastinate about maybe paying a bill or, you know, um, how many people have spoiled their milk because they didn't put it up right away. I mean, I know people that leave it out on the counter. I'm like, why? Why not just, like, the fridge is right there. Like, it's, like, it's, it's right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, why leave it on the counter? I don't get that, you're, you know? You're, but that's just me going off this morning. You're uh, you're clearly talking about my kids now, so. Um, 
Well, it's all kids, and I had to tell Caleb, look, that's not allowed, and he knows. I don't allow him to leave stuff around. Like, if we're getting ready to leave the house, like last night we were leaving to go to his hitting coach, and he had a, a bottle of water that he was drinking, and he left it on the nightstand. And he was in the car, and I made him get out of the car. I said, hey, Caleb, come here. And he looked at me, he smiled, and he just knew. He knew something, because I never, I said, come here, come here, come here. Hurry, you got to go. He goes, what? I said, you left your water bottle on the nightstand. Either put it back in the fridge or throw it away. But don't leave anything out. You know what I'm saying? Like those little things like that. I said, Caleb, I know that I drive you nuts sometimes with this, but one day it's going to pay off, and one day you're going to thank me for it. Don't leave it out. If you leave the house, leave it clean. You know what I'm saying? It's just my opinion. Elsa? I probably should have went in the military, Mike. Should I? I think I belonged to the military. Uh, I think I actually belonged as a drill sergeant, now that I think about it. Maybe. I would have loved waking people up at 4 a.m. banging on pots. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. <laughs> Been like, that bunk's not made tight enough. Do it again. I can see you doing that. <laughs> I can see you doing that. Hey, Al says he never makes his bed because it's all about efficiency. Now, that sounds exactly like my son. My son would be like, it's totally inefficient. That's wasted effort. It is, but it's also, Al, it declines your energy when you walk in your room and your beds. It, it does something to you psychological, my friend. You'll have issues on down the road. It may not affect you today, but it's going to do something to you. So I do recommend, Al, stepping it up and starting to make your bed, my friend. <laughs> Okay, uh, it, it does something to you. It just being having a clean home is is a peaceful home. Having a clean environment is a peaceful environment. You know what I'm saying? It just is. It's the truth. You know, Carol mentioned my clean office. She's all about calling me out today, apparently. Um, but uh, you know, once we moved in, of Who's course, she? we huh, Carol? Who's she? I thought we banned her from the show. <laughs> How did she get back on? I don't know. She must, have, she must be channeling my hacker. Um, of course, we just moved into this new place and, you know, we had boxes all around the office and stuff. And, and uh, you know, because we were focused on other things and it takes a while to get unpacked and whatever. And finally, she just kind of last week, she's like, I can't take it anymore. And, uh, and got the, you know, the office cleaned out. And, and it's so much nicer to be in here working when all the clutter is gone. And uh, it so, really is. It really is. It makes it a big difference on your energy. Really for sure. Yes, your energy, your flow, just, you know, when you're organized, you feel in control. You feel clear. You feel a sense of, of flow to you that you have when you have energy. So, Carol, good job. Al just used the word crony. I haven't heard that in years. Awesome, Al. Awesome use of the word, too. And, yes, Amber and Carol are very good friends, so they got each other's back. It's been a long time since I heard the word crony, Al. Great, uh, great. Hey, let's uh, let's jump like, to a few. If you eat your cereal and you're done with it, go put it in the sink and rinse it out. Like I know I've been to people's houses that leave like dishes in the sink and don't rinse it out immediately. I don't get that either. Like immediately, just rinse it. That way, it's easier to clean. It's easier to wash, and definitely don't leave it laying around. Right? Anyways, we'll, we'll talk about that on another Tuesday, Mike. Let's get into some of our questions, man. Hey, we never shared another habit. Any other bad habits that uh, you've noticed that you've seen people possess that you thought, you know, that person? I, like, I've met people, Mike, that I thought could have high success, that I thought actually could be millionaires, that could be extremely wealthy, but they're not because of their habits. So are there any other habits maybe that you've noticed that you've picked up on? Feels like I'm interviewing you today, friend. It's good. It's weird. Um, well, first of all, just to, about the cereal, I don't eat cereal, so I don't have to worry about that. But uh, I guess once- I don't, I don't have cereal in my house. But anyways, go ahead. You count granola with like some almond milk. Yeah, that sounds good. You lost sounds me. so good right now. Uh, so some other habits that I've seen, you know, uh, um, and I don't know if this is a habit or a mentality, but I've seen people that like immediately react to like opportunity with negativity. And, and I don't really get that. Or, or they're in the habit of I'm always looking at the, you know, here's one of the things that I've noticed with, with myself at least uh, and, and other people that I've seen that are successful. They're not afraid to, uh, 
sort of go out and take a, take a chance on something or, or take a risk or, or do something that doesn't seem immediately, you know, like you sort of got to work through the details of, well, let's say, for example, you have an opportunity to take a family vacation and you don't know exactly know how you're going to do it. And I've seen a lot of people that have the habit of immediately like putting up walls and saying, well, that's, I don't, you know, that's not something I planned on. I don't have a way to do it, whatever. And that sort of immediate negativity blocks them from a lot of success. Yeah. Ne ne negativity, Mike, is a bad, it's a bad habit. It is. And people are, are very, believe it or not, their negative thoughts are habitual. Their reactions are habitual, believe it or not. And I agree with you. I agree that that's got to be broken if people are going to have a breakthrough in their in their success and in their life. You know, and I agree with you. Your reactions are extremely important. It's like what I put yesterday on Instagram or somewhere. I said, you know, one of that quote we've heard, I believe it was Chuck Swindell said, you know, life is 10 percent what happens to us, 90 percent how we react to it. Sure. I wish people would slow down and really think about that quote because it's so true. You know, we can't control life. Life happens. We can't control people. We can't control circumstances. Sometimes things just just happen, right? But we really can control the way we react. And we should focus and get into the habit of reacting with a positive, upbeat attitude, you know? Yeah, and, and that is a habit. And you can develop that habit. You develop habits through, you know, intentionally acting. And so that's, uh, did Mike disappear? Or did I disappear? <laughs> Mike's in the habit of when he disappears. Let's see if he says something about Spreecast. Hey, welcome back, Mike. We missed hey, you. You know, uh, it's a great day. I could hear what you said, so I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the habit. Good, good, good reaction, my friend. All right, let's tell. Let, let's share some of the questions that have come in. Well, you know, first question is is great because it uh, it plays into the last uh, our topic about negativity and segues. a lot of times. Sorry. You mean it segues into what we've been talking about? Is that what you're saying? I, I didn't. I intentionally didn't say segue. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. But yes. Yeah, actually it does segue nicely. This is a nice interleave. Uh, so how do you get rid of negative emotions? We talk about negative habits, negative reactions. Sometimes people have just negative emotions. What are some ways, you know, if you identify that in your life, how can you get rid of those negative emotions? Well, this is actually easier. This is, this is somewhat challenging to answer on a live show only because some people really need to do the work of healing and a lot of times with negative emotions there's a, there's a deeper issue right here that needs to be resolved and healed a lot of times when you see somebody that's extremely negative or they have negative emotions such as maybe okay let's name some uh, some negative emotions that people have okay we can talk about guilt, uh, stress, bitterness, resentment, anxiety, fear. All of these are negative emotions, right? So basically the way to get rid of it is, first of all, you've got to go through some inner healing. One of the ways that you can go through inner healing, I don't want to say fast, because sometimes healing is a process. But it all depends on the work that someone is willing to do and how much they're willing to change their thoughts. See, you can't eliminate toxic and negative emotions unless you're willing to start, like we already talked about, looking at things differently and thinking about things differently and refusing to think the negative about everything. If you can somehow take every bad thing that's really happened to you and, learn, and paint a positive picture about that and see how actually positive has come out of that, it actually can bring healing to you. It's like, you know what brought healing to me, and I've shared this on my show, I used to have bad negative energy as a result of my mother's rejection when I was a little two-year-old boy, and what brought healing is one day I had an aha moment of so many things of like, 
wait a minute, this was a gift from God. This was actually God giving me a gift. First of all, it made me a much better person. Second of all, you know, adversity, we, we usually view adversity as something bad, but in reality, Mike, adversity is a gift. It's a blessing. If you have been through a lot of stuff, instead of looking at it like some victim or, you know, letting it turn into like all kinds of negative emotions such as resentment, bitterness, stress, fear, anger, like look at it as a blessing. Like it is a blessing to suffer, to go through adversity, to go through trouble because that makes you the beautiful person that you are. It gives you the wisdom that you possess, the experience and the, 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 the gold that you learn through this stuff. Mike, a lot of this heals negative emotions when you start changing your perspective and you start seeing the tragedies as blessings and start like, I know people, Mike, I know people that have, I mean, when I say I know, like I have their cell phone number, we talk regularly, that lost children in tragedies, that lost spouses in tragedies, that lost parents in tragedies. Some have never gotten over it. Some are in a state of grief that they can't get out of, and I haven't lived that, so I'm not even going to say anything other than I've also met those that even though they hurt, believe it or not, their perspective is so like, you know, I've had parents look at me and say, you know what? It, yes, we miss them. We think about them every day, but we're just so grateful that we had them for 17 years when they were talking about their 17 year old killed in a car accident. You know, like then I've met others that were bitter. They, they hated God for it. You know, I mean, we life is life. There, we, we're not promised a life without tragedy, without trouble, without problems, without difficulties. But it's like, Mike, you ready for this? You and I saw this firsthand in Seattle. You and I right now, we saw this in Seattle when we were talking to that homeless couple. You remember? You remember their attitude living in homeless, living under a tarp, okay, with nothing. Their attitude was so, they had so much gratitude. Like, I was like, man, it must be so hard, you know, living under this tarp. And they're like, no, we're just so grateful to be alive. We're so, and really, Mike, you know what, you know what gratitude actually heals a lot of negative toxic emotions? Learning how to be thankful for what you have getting all your energy out of the past and focusing, okay, you know what? This is what I still have left. No, life's not perfect. You know, no, it's not all worked out the way I wanted to, but I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm seeing and start thinking that, and, and we saw that Mike with that couple, right? So I believe this is the key to healing toxic negative emotions. And I believe anybody can do this. And then we've met other people that were home. Like that, that little kid, right? 10 years old. Um, you know, I met kids that maybe got an iPod touch that were depressed and angry at their parents. Like I told you I wanted a black one and it was a white one, right? Like then I met that little homeless kid who got like that little like cheap hockey stick in a hockey ball. And he was like, so happy. He was like, I love this. He's like, I'm so thankful, you know? Or a kid that gets a teddy bear, right? And they're like, squeeze, I love this teddy bear, right? And then you get some kids that you give them something and they're like, is that it? You know, and it really is, it's all about attitude and gratitude. Attitude and gratitude, we should make a song about it. Mike, you wanna show them our singing skills and do a little duet with me? Come on, come in with me on it. Let's do a little attitude and gratitude song. You ready? Here it goes. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so what you, what you think? Mike's like, Mike's like, no. Like, How do I kick him off? Just what die. Die. <laughs> I do sing to Caleb all the yeah. time. Anyways, he begged me. When I showed him yesterday's Feel for Success video, he goes, Dad, don't ever do that again. <laughs> we, uh, we actually would like people to watch the show, which is why we don't sing.
<laughs> also, we'll be rapping the attitude and gratitude. I throw down some freestyle. Yo, it's all about your attitude. And if you want to fix your attitude, you need some gratitude. How's that for you, Al? All right, anyways, Mike, let's go. What's your what's your take on that, my friend? One second, got to write down a time on this so I can make today's clip. <laughs> hey, um, what's funny is Mike and I really want to do a Christmas album. So pray about that. <laughs> I wonder if we do like the uh, voice synth stuff. Maybe we can make it, you know, I'm pretty good with a mixer board. Maybe I can make it sound okay. We'll see. <laughs> Carol says, <Smith. laughs> There's the quote of the day. Stop, please. Stop, please. That's what I'm, That's my new two words. Stop, please. <laughs> Whenever I see Carol going postal on us, I'm just going to say, stop, please. Stop, please. <laughs> hey, you know, uh, in, in all reality, though, the what you just said about gratitude plays such a large part in it. And I like what Melody said a little bit ago about bitterness. Uh, you know, no, no vessel can contain bitterness long term. Uh, so yeah, that includes us. But, you know, adversity comes in our life. We, we, we hit obstacles, we hit difficulties, and, and we talked about habits a little bit ago. Uh, <clears throat> and having the habit of looking at it negatively, you change that habit to look at it, say, okay, this is something that I have to work through. And looking towards the end goal, you know, here's an analogy for you. Um, you, you and I are launching a business right now. It's going to be, uh, there's going to be adversity. Massive! <clears throat> so, well, it's going to be huge. But we're basically, well, we're basically psychotic. <clears throat> we're committing to, to, uh, to work, you know. Committing, committing ourselves to insane. But go ahead. Massive amounts of work. It's going to be <clears throat> incredible to try to launch this thing, to launch it and get it going. Uh, we're going to hit adversity. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be things that are going to stand in our way. There's going to be things we're going to have to work around. There's going to be, you know, uh, financial stress, there's going to be emotional stress, there's going to be physical stress, mental stress, all those things. We know that we're going to encounter that. But, you know, at the end of the day, anything that's worth doing is going to stress you, is going to have adversity. You know, if it was easy, I mean, if we literally like started tomorrow and like six months later, we're both millionaires and it wasn't really hard, it'd be like, that wasn't very fulfilling, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's something about the struggle that like builds you and strengthens you and makes it worthwhile. It defines the uh, it defines the, the 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 win at the end. And without that adversity, and that's the way life is really. So without adversity, yeah. without hitting things, I mean, we don't grow, and we don't uh, we don't we, ha we don't have that that uh, sense of achievement or success. Mike, you're right. Adversity is a blessing. I mean, you you don't want it, but when it comes, don't view it as some kind of like, oh, I'm cursed. You know the number one thing that, I, of course, tomorrow's on spirituality, so we'll probably cover this. I don't like how many people that use God as some kind of punisher when we're going through bad things. Like, well, what did I do wrong? Is God upset with me? Like a lot of things, Mike, are just life. Yeah. A lot of things are blessing in disguise. Some of the trouble and tragedy you're going through is actually a real legitimate blessing in disguise. And it's hard to see it when you're going through it. But that's what's going to help heal those negative emotions. Yes. You know, it's kind of like this. It's like we're actually supposed to serve in the area that we've been hurt the most. Most people can never do this because... They keep telling their story, right, as a victim and with resentment and bitterness rather than as a conqueror and a victor and somebody that beat it. And now I can help millions because I beat it, right? So those that have been through uh, molestation or abuse or divorce or kids that have been in and out of foster care, yeah, there needs to be some therapy. There needs to be some emotional healing. But what doesn't need to happen is for those people to stay tied to that experience and story. You need to beat it and break it so you can help other people. That's our calling in life is to serve in areas where we've been hurt. A lot of people can't serve in areas where they've been hurt because they choose to be bitter and resentful and really downright hateful about it. You ever just meet people that are hateful? Yeah. I mean, really hateful? 
<clears throat> yeah, it's unfortunate for sure. Not the kind of people you want to hang around with. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions that it doesn't look like we're going to get to today, but we'll uh, we'll put them on the back burner for next week. Uh, if you're watching the show on the archive, I forgot to mention, <clears throat> uh, you know, you can always send in questions. Email them to me at mike at mathematics.com or text them in 727-341-5599. So uh, either of those methods or uh we will be back. For you that are sad that this show is ending right now, we will be back tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., just like we are every day, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, fuel for success. Mike, is there anything you want to just throw out there as far as on the technology side, maybe uh, that we haven't covered in a while for people, that how they can better access the content from Fuel for Success? Well, of course, you can always go to fuelforsuccess.tv. Uh, one of the things, I actually had someone ask me recently, uh, you know, that couldn't necessarily always find the Spreecast on, if you go to Spreecast.com and look through the shows, find the recent ones or the uh, upcoming ones, you can always go to fuelforsuccess.tv, click on the live link, and it'll bring you to uh, today's show. Uh, also, right on the homepage, uh, we publish a link to the upcoming show within about two hours of the, of the show starting. So, you can always go to fuelforsuccess.tv to get to the live show and click on that link. And then, of course, the archives are always there, both in uh, video format and audio. And then you can go to the podcast, uh, iTunes. And, of course, we've got a YouTube channel. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. Then you'll not only get these uh, broadcasts and archive, but you'll also get the clips that we're doing. Uh, we're doing some highlight clips here and there and uh, maybe even some supplemental videos that go along with that. And uh, look for an app coming soon. You know, I will yeah, aim into that. Hey, I will say this, um, all the comments are fantastic. I was going to say the word fabulous, but I don't see myself being the manly man that I am using the word fabulous. So let me say the, wor the words have been awesome. They've been, <laughs> they've been fantastic. Very good stuff over here in the chat box. And that's what we love about Fuel for Success is you're able to interact with us, ask questions, share comments, and we like them and we grow from them. We love y'all and we shall see you tomorrow, tomorrow. Right, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Have a terrific Tuesday, everyone. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.